Hey folks, uh, the goal of my video today is to give an analogy for persistent homology. First, let me just give you a couple slides introducing persistent homology before I get to the analogy. So persistent homology is something that you can compute whenever you have an increasing sequence of spaces. And persistent homolo homology records the holes, not only at a single space, but also how those holes change as the space increases. So I'll give an example um, coming from sublevel set persistent homology. And these images were created by Lander uh, Verhoof. So on the left, we have a surface. And think of that as a real valued function defined on the square. So the surface looks something like a volcano. And we're going to sort of raise the height of these cuts. And we'll consider the surface that's beneath the cut. So as I raise the height, you see that the region of the square beneath that height increases, all right? And in persistent homology, we'll track how the holes vary as we raise that height. So in, in red, we have zero dimensional holes, which are just connected components. And in blue, we have one dimensional holes, which are loops. So as I start raising the height, First, I just have a single connected component. As I raise the height, that component gets bigger, but it's still just a single connected component here. If I raise the height again, I actually have these two bits that are dis uh, distinct connected components measured here and here, along with the connected component that I already had from before. If I raise the height a little bit further, aha, now the circle appears for the first time. So this is the first time I have this one dimensional loop or hole. Raise the height a little bit more, I get a new connected component appearing here. And then that connects back up with what we had before. So we're down to one connected component, but we still have a hole. And then maybe I raise the height enough so that the hole of this volcano appears. Okay, so maybe you've seen persistent homology before, maybe not, but we're tracking holes, connected components and, and loops, and we're storing information about when they were born and when they di died in these uh, persistent homology intervals. So here's the analogy. I'll refer you to this um, blog post at the Library of Congress. And this post was written by Jennifer Harbster and uh, Julie Miller, and the link to this post is in the um, is in the description of this video. So please check out this post if you're interested. Um, I'll say that this analogy I heard first from uh, Jan Siegert at the University of Minnesota all the way back in 2009. So this blog post describes um, um, Thomas Jefferson's visual representation of a vegetable market. And I appreciate that the blog post also describes uh, the story of Aletha Browning Turner, who was an enslaved woman who ran a different market of her own. And, and through this business, she was able to purchase the freedom of some, some of her relatives. So here's Jefferson's visualization of the vegetable market he went to. We have the months of the year in different columns. And then we have different vegetables along the rows. And each vegetable corresponds to an interval. So for example, here I have um, sprouts. And that interval tells you the first day that sprouts appeared on the market, and then the last day that sprouts appeared on the market. So sprouts first appeared in February, and then last appeared in May. Whereas if you look at broccoli, broccoli first appeared in or this is asparagus here. Asparagus first appeared in April and then last appeared in June. So it looks a little bit like persistent homology intervals. Of course, each bar no longer represents a topological feature, right? I'm not trying to claim that you should represent um, asparagus with a zero dimensional connected component or with a one dimensional hole. But this, this representation of the market over time is analogous to persistent homology representations of topological features over some change in, in scale, perhaps. 
Um, there are some, of course, similarities with this visual representation of the market and persistent homology and some differences. One similarity is that Jefferson has chosen to list his vegetables in order of appearance, right? So the vegetables that appear first are at the top of his list and the vegetables that appear later at the bottom of the list. And in persistent homology, just like in this vegetable market, you could reorder the rows however you wanted without changing the content of the visualization. But in persistent homology, we often also order our bars by birth time first. A difference between this and persistent homology is that you'll see radishes appear twice. So radishes I, I supposedly uh, apparently have two regions of time in which they were in this market in uh, Washington, DC. That doesn't happen so much with persistent homology, although maybe under some definitions of zigzag persistent homology, that might happen. So I'm curious if there are any maybe research questions or pseudo research questions that this analogy might give for you. For example, um, let's say you have two different vegetable markets or two different grocery stores and you build this visualization for two different vegetable markets or two different grocery stores. Can you try to define the notion of distance between two different vegetable markets, say one in Washington DC and another in Philadelphia? How close are these vegetable markets to each other in terms of the appearance of the different vegetables at different times of years? So you might even take persistent homology as an inspiration for defining such a distance, maybe using a bottleneck distance or a Wasserstein distance between barcodes as some such uh, notion of distance between now vegetable markets or grocery stores. You could also ask the question, what else might be useful to represent in this way? So maybe you want to represent a uh, harvest. So the birth time of a feature would be when you plant uh, a vegetable and the death time would be when you harvest that vegetable. Of course, not, not all um, things that you could represent in this way need to be related to vegetables. I'm sure there's many other time varying uh, data structures that you might want to represent by intervals like this. Last, maybe I'll, I'll mention an exercise to the viewer, which is what would it look like to take Jefferson's um, intervals, I'll call them, and instead represent them in a persistence diagram format where each interval gets turned into a single point in the birth death plane. So each interval now is plotted as a single point and these points appear above the diagonal, which would be where birth is equal to death. They're above the diagonal because each vegetable disappears from the market after it first appears. All right, so that's the end of my video. It's an analogy between these persistent homology intervals and Jefferson's visualization of this vegetable market in DC. And uh, I hope you, uh, uh, you know, were at, at the very least amused by this uh, analogy or connection and, uh, and maybe it inspires some uh, interesting ideas for you to think about further as well. So thanks for your time and attention.